Hi, I'm Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to the video tutorial for the LSP Box Grid Templates inspired by Anna Brandt. And we're actually using these images shot by Anna uh, to give you this tutorial. Absolutely gorgeous. So I've created this template for you to use. It does have quite a lot of layers. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go through all the layers and some tips and tricks and shooting practices you can use to make this hyper cute, realistic grid photo. So after downloading from the LSP Actions website, you're going to get a folder as just a zip file which contains the three templates. You can right click and choose um, Extract All on Windows. And on a Mac, you can use Archive Utility. Photoshop isn't good at reading zipped files. Um, it, it just isn't. It might come up with no parser or file format can be found. If it does that, it means you haven't unzipped and extracted. So it's really important to make sure you extract before using. So I'm going to go ahead and open all of these up into Photoshop to show you them. The one we're going to be working on today is probably the 6x2 landscape, just because it's a, um, a little bit of a quicker one and the principle is the same for all of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and open into Photoshop. You can open whichever one uh, you want to use into Photoshop. It may take a moment because these are really big files with quite a lot of layers um, to use. You can only use these in Photoshop. Um, I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud, the latest version right now at the time of Photoshop. Um, you can use these in um, older versions of Photoshop. You can use them in Elements, but I'm doing this tutorial in Creative Cloud. So when they open up into Photoshop, you'll notice the image you get are numbered squares and a lot of layers in your Layers panel. If you can't see your Layers panel, come up to Window and hit Layers, and that means you can see your Layers panel. That's going to go ahead and open up the landscape. You have a portrait, 2x6, um, a landscape, 6x2, and a 9x9 nine nine square. In your Layers panel, at the bottom you have your background layer. This is just plain white. Above this you have the grid, and if you can see your layers large, um, which you might want to, you can check this in the panel options. You see I have large, if you have like small or none selected, it's going to look like this. Um, it, you know, whatever takes your fancy, I, I much prefer to be able to physically see what's going on with these layers. So each layer has a layer mask. The layer mask is a black or a white rectangle or box uh, clipped to the layer. Black means hide, a little bit like a lotto scratch card, black means hidden, and white means show. For example, this layer here is all on show right now. This one, paint shadow, is all hidden, and the grid only have the squares on show relating to that particular grid, so it makes it easier for you to edit. Let's go on over to um, one of these already done by Anna Brandt. You can see here we've clipped the images in. I'm going to show you how to do this so we can turn these ones on or off and we've adjusted the layer masks. You can also paint um, and edit and adapt. I'm going to show you how to do this. So you clip, you use clipping masks for these. It's really simple. I'm going to show you how. Above this you have this interesting layer here, grid selection if needed. This is set to a 0% flow. It doesn't actually show but what you can do with this is control or command on your keyboard and click and it makes a selection. Above this you also have box selection if needed. Sorry, I just paused it just for a second because I realised I was on the older version of this. You also have box selection if needed. So you can call and control or command right click on this one and it will select the boxes for you. And this you might need for your masking. So it just creates that handy selection for you. And then above this you have paint any shadows and highlights onto the grid over the top. At the bottom here you have change grid colour. You can double click and choose from an area in your image or you can change to something like red or something like that if you want to. I'll show you how to do that in a little while when we've finished adding the images in. You also have paint shadow on the grid so you can grab a soft brush set to a low flower opacity and if you want to paint any kind of uh, shading on here you can do. Just with a white brush, remember white means show on a layer mask and black means hide. So white will reveal the um, effect of the layer and black hides it. So let's go ahead and start adding some images in. And first we're going to start using these gorgeous images by Anna Brand. Let's just make this a little larger. Oh, they are as large as they are. So you can see here a little one was shot within the box um, on a table and they, they were spotted the whole time. Now for you, I'd recommend, um, you see, I'm going to open up 
let's open up two of them here. Now if you can shoot dead on, like straight onto the image, a little bit more like this one or even you know even more so so pop your camera on some books pop it on a tripod put it on anything that you can kind of angle that camera around get it set up you could even place a little something in here to get your focus you know around the eye area because you're going to want to shoot dead on the box so you want to get that perspective so you see all four perspective lines from the front to the back corners of the box you want them all to be equal if possible because that's going to make a much more believable composite than if you're kind of free holding the camera and shooting all the way around so for example you see this angle and the shot is slightly further away and slightly different because obviously you know um he came in he's checking on little one i get it but it's just gonna be a little bit of a harder edit for you because you see we're not missing we're missing a little bit up here and here we have more so if you can get your camera um in a locked kind of position when shooting these it's going to make your editing so much easier if you use something like um, Lightroom or Bridge or anything like that, that you can crop these in um, beforehand as well, that's also going to make your editing a lot simpler. But I'm going to go in um, just using these literally straight out of camera. I'd recommend if there's anything, again, using Lightroom or something, where there's, for example, there's a scratch on the skin in all of the photos, you can do a quick edit first. You could also num number the photos one, two, three four five six you know seven eight nine in the order you're going to use them that's also a little bit of planning that will make your editing ten times easier because this is a you know it's a shot that you plan and you edit and you create this little art piece with so let's dive in to using the layers that we have here I'm going to start in the top left and I'm going to use these images again you can rename um, let me just pop these into a folder Let's pop them in and let's give them a number you know let's give them numbers just for this edit but you can do this you can export from lots of ways you can export from Lightroom you can make copies of the files you can crop them you know anyway I think this one's gonna look cute as the um, you know one of the middle ones so how about we put her on number two also you see how her feet are hanging over in number two um, you don't really want them hanging over the bottom too much you want them kind of crossing into this one so for the bottom images, I'm going to use where she's all in. So how about we use this one for number four? Um, so we have number two here and number four kind of looking up. So you can plan these. This one, she's looking the other way. So how about we have this one as number six? This is just one way of planning. You know, I leave all the planning to you. You decide exactly how you want to use it. She's looking down, so how about this one for number one? That would work really well there. So we have one and two, and when we have four and six, so we now have a five centre and a three top right. So how about um, how about this one for five centre? Let's go for this one. And three top right, let's go for, let's just say this one for now. That she's looking down so I've numbered our images just so I know which ones I'm going to be dragging in it's up to you you can you know you can just you may be able to just look you might have them organized you might have a set it's entirely up to you so let's show you how we can get these in I'm going to start up here with number one top left so you want to come onto file and choose place embedded to locate that image or if you've got them open on a window you can drag and drop I'd recommend doing this then copying and pasting so I'm just going to drop that image in and you see it's come here as its own separate layer. At the moment it's solid, it's kind of taking over everything. If you've popped it in over here, it might be hiding behind. I'm going to drag this up, make sure it's above number one, make sure it's above the one that you're going to, you know, be editing. Right click and choose create clipping mask. And now you see it's only showing in number one. You can control or command T on your keyboard or go to edit free transform. And this is going to allow you to drag the image in to size. Again, if you've cropped this in, it's going to be easier because you won't have all the background um, to drag. So now this is the part where it's going to take a little bit of work. You want to be able to drag this in to the right size. And what I'm going to do, you can also double click here. You see, this is a smart object. I don't want to like bombard you with things if you don't know them about Photoshop. But this is a smart object because you've placed or dropped it in. 
If your image looks like this, it's not a smart object, you've copied and pasted so you can't do this, but if it is a smart object, you can double click this and you actually get the image open. And what you could do at this point is crop it. So I just rotated it a little bit to get it a bit more dead on. I don't want to lose any areas of this, but I'm just cropping it in. So hit Control or Command S to save or come up here to file and just choose save. And that's going to bump it back over into your image with the crop. So you see here, it's now cropped. Now at this point, what we want to do, let me zoom in and I'm going to just change this grid just so that we, you know, we're not going to keep it like that just so I can show you. So Control or Command T and what we're going to need to do is resize this in. Don't worry about the feet or anything overhanging right now because I'm going to show you how to mask that. The most important line that you need to line up in this whole thing is this one here. This line here is the one you want to line up because that's where the natural shadows are, that's where the overhang is. You see this line here? This is the one we want to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down. We're going to do a lot of moving and bringing it up here. I'm looking at the corners right now. I don't want any of the front face of the box showing, just the inside. So I'm just going to drag these corners out best that we can and make sure that front line is lining up. Now we come to the next part of transforming. If you shot the box dead on, um, gold star for you, it means this part's going to be easier. But if you're a mere mortal, like the rest of us, you're going to want to um, distort this a little bit so the perspective matches. So back on your um, your transform, if you right click you can choose distort or you can come up to edit transform and choose distort. And what you can do now, you can slightly drag these corners out a little bit. Can you see we're kind of distorting everything? Because we, we're looking at this join point here, we don't want to have the front face of the box in. I want that hidden so I'm just going to drag this here so it's coming up to the corner. This is going to make a much more realistic composite. And again, down here, I'm looking at that line that I want to connect up. And the same here. Now, once you've done this, you're going to want to go back to these four corners and tweak because distorting might well, you know, move all of those corners around. This part is important. Please don't skip this part. Don't rush it. This is the thing that's going to make or break your image. So do spend that time, pop a little bit of music on, stick your latest Netflix crime thriller on in the background, just anything you can do to get through, but please concentrate on this part. Take your time with it. If you're new to this, it is something that will get easier as you go along. But the thing I'm making sure with moving this around is that that line is adding up as best we can with the bottom of the fake grid here. And when you're done, hit enter. So she is now kind of within the grid. But what we want to do now is make a selection so we can get these feet and things hanging over. If you're in Photoshop Creative Cloud, you can come up to select and choose subject. I can guarantee it won't be perfect. If it is, then good. But, you know, if not, it gives you a good starting point. Now's the point where we need to start editing the mask. The mask is here where it says number one top left or top center. So you click on the black box, not the gray box. It needs to be the black box. Click on the black box. And what you're going to want to do is grab a brush, set to black. I mean, sorry, set to white. Ignore me. And we're going to paint over this so that it starts showing over the layer. And you can see here now on the layer mask, what's happened is we've added to that white selection. So it's also showing the, the cutout. Recommend at this point you zoom in with a small hard brush set to black or white because black means hide. And you see I'm just using the black brush to paint away any dodgy masking. Photoshop is amazing. There's only so much it can do. It might mask perfectly, it might not. You only really need to do this if you've got overhanging bits. If it's one of the images where the, your little one is um, or your subjects are well within the box, then that's not so much of a problem because you know you don't need to edit the front. This is only if you've got little feet overhanging or things like that. If you're used to using Photoshop, this will make sense to you. 
if you're newer at Photoshop, then um, I'm really hoping that this is useful for you when it comes forward to, um, you know, masking other subjects in the future, because this is really handy stuff to know. So I'm just coming in around these toes, just making sure the cutout is good. I'm holding shift on the mask. When you feel hold shift and click, it removes the mask for a minute there. So we can just see. Remember, white means show, so I could be painting in, you know, the actual thing there, and black means hide. You can switch between black and white on your keyboard using the X key if you want to, or you can just come over here and switch um, if you're not so used to using keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are great. There is actually a keyboard shortcut freebie over on the LST Actions website if you want it. So, no, I made these blue. What I'm going to do, I'm actually now going to double click the change grid colour layer and use the colour picker to choose um, an area of the box. You want somewhere a little highlighted. And this is going to help adapt the box to your white balance. So now we have quite a realistic box front going on there. Please do pause and skip back on this video at any point if you need to. Now something else we have is here, paint shadow on grid. This is where you're going to add shading under your subject. So I'm going to grab the brush, set to white, on a low flow or a low opacity, make sure it's nice and soft. And here we're going to add some shading in. So the light in this image is coming from camera left. You can see here there's a bit of shadow here, there's shadow underneath, and we want to match that to make it look like she's really overhanging the box. So I'm just going to grab this brush, set to white, I'm just going to lightly bring some shadow in here. And you notice the shadow coming from the dress is quite pink. Of course, being a Photoshop shadow, this is kind of greyish toned. What you can do is double click here where it says levels and you can adapt these shadows to suit your image. This darker colour might work perfectly well or you might want to change it. So click on the RGB. For example, this one I'm going to hit red and in the middle I'm going to actually add a little bit more red in by just bringing that middle up. I'm going to click on the blue and if you take blue away, opposite from blue is yellow. So we're just adding a little bit of warmth. But the main one we want to add in is the red. Slightly red shadow. Can you see there? That's matching a lot nicer now. These are all optional things you can do. But if you're able to, it's just going to make your edit that much more realistic. And it's something you're going to get a lot faster with as well. Um, I'm going quite slowly on this video, but you know, in reality, uh, with these images and six grid like this, will probably take me one to two minutes per subject. So that's 12, 15 you know, minutes it might take to do this edit. Once you get used to it, it can be quite quick. So let's go in with image number two. I'm going to click on the two box here and we're going to drag and drop our subject in. And there they are, dragged in. Of course, they are, um, you know, just sitting there, not clipped in yet. So right click, create that clipping mask. And let's resize them in. This image hasn't been cropped. It's just kind of as it is out of camera landscape shot. So we're going to want to make sure that we line everything up as best we can. Line as many of those edges up before if you go straight in with a distort to get those edges, you're going to distort the image too much. So get it as close as you can. I'm really focusing on the bottom line here. Now I'm going to right click distort and just get this adding up. Getting these corners in. The number one most important part of the edit is this part. So making sure you get everything lined up before we go into the masking. So I'm really focusing on that bottom line. I don't really want it hanging over, but equally, um, I want to make sure that it's covered up and it's within the grid. Okay, so now do you remember what's next? It's select subject, so select subject because we have some overhang on those feet. Clicking on the mask of number two with a brush set to white and we're just going to paint those feet in. And now's the point. We're going to just deselect, control command D to deselect where we just tidy up the selection. 
using a black brush, brush set to black. If your brush is set to white, you're going to be painting it all back in again, so brush set to black. The great way about doing this, rather than just cutting your subject out, for example, um, because they're layer masks like Lotto scratch cards, it means you can go back at any point and refine the selection if you want to. If you get to the end and you think, oh, I've missed a bit, or I need to paint that back in, you can. And once you have the knowledge of how these layers work, it's actually really quite simple. So I'm using um, X on my keyboard just to make these keyboard shortcuts um, to make the brush switch between black and white. Because if at any point you make a mistake, you can hit X or you can switch over here and you can just paint it back in again. Completely non-destructive. Layer mask is one of those things that once you start, it's um, it's something that kind of changes your Photoshop editing, really. It's amazing. So I'm just making sure that I'm not missing any little bits here from those feet. Okay, and now next up again, it's the shadow. So down here, paint shadow on grid. Going to grab a nice soft brush with a low flow or opacity. You could leave shadows till right at the end if you wanted to. I'm just kind of going as we go and just paint really gently, dabbing in a little bit of shadow there, following the natural shadow of our image. So there we go, that's image number two popped in. Let's go for image number three. So I'm going to click on three, top right. drag and drop or file place embedded right click cr create a clipping mask so it clips it in you see the little clippy here the little clippy arrow into that layer free transform get this into position very very as best we can um, before we go into the distortion making sure that edge is lined up as I can get it right click distort If at any point you mess any of these up, you can use the box selection if needed and the grid selection if needed to paint those masks back in and start over. That's why I've popped them in there for you, it's just so you can use them. Okay, so I'm lining up corners and making sure the original box isn't overhanging if I can help it. And again here, lining up those bottom corners as best and accurately as I can. And enter. Now we have a little bit of overhang here, so select subject. If you're on an older version of Photoshop, you're going to, um, instead of using select subject, you need to gonna come onto the mask, grab your brush in white, and you're just going to have to start painting it on yourself. And that is going to bring in some of the original layer as well. So that is where you come in with a brush set to black. Bring the flower up a little bit, and then you start painting it off, getting in as close as you can. Not quite as intuitive as the um, the newer version of selection, which helps you, but this is, you know, this is the way we've been doing it for decades. We can still do it for a bit longer if needed. Now, what might happen here, if you're painting on, you might accidentally paint over, and then you try and paint on, your selection might go a bit wrong. And that's where the box selection and the grid selection up here comes in helpful. So you can control and command click box selection if needed, switch to your brush um, set to white and you can paint this back in, oh sorry, on your back onto the layer mask, you need to make sure you're on the right layer, set to white and you can paint this back in. Black if you need to paint it off. The same with grid selection, you can right click um, and choose grid selection and again, you can paint this on if needed. So I'm just gonna go and finish this little bit of masking here, Ooh, making sure I'm on the mask. I'm gonna need that box selection again. So right click, uh, right, sorry, control or command click the box selection. 
and that means with a white brush I can just paint it back in. So if you accidentally went like this, because you've got your box selection on, you can paint it in again. If you're not used to Photoshop, it can be a little bit manual, a little bit tricky, but I promise you you'll get there. These layers are um, helpful. So down onto the shadows, nice soft brush, nice big soft brush, just paint a little bit of shadow on there. If you paint too much shadow, you can switch to a black brush and paint it off. Completely non-destructive again. And the shadows is also something you can refine when you're finished if you wanted to. Oop, you're trying to zoom out. So now we have images four, five and six to do. At this point, if you're going and it's going well, you could save as a copy. So save as a copy um, and you know give it your client name grid. But at any point, if you record over the original, that's fine. You can just simply go back into your account LSP and re-download the fresh version again for free. So let's bring in image number four. I'm going to drag and drop. I'm going to make sure that I place this by dragging the layers above four. Right click, create clipping mask. I'm going to move a little bit faster now. So I'm just going to resize this in, making sure that that bottom is lined up as best that we can, if the perspective is as good as we can get it, and then uh, distort. Oh, I'm just going to zoom in a touch first, and then distort. Again, if you've shot this dead on, uh, you're going to find you don't need to distort, really, because um, by shooting it dead on, in theory, you should just be able to bring your images in and mask them after resizing. So let's make sure we're lining the bottom up. Most important step, otherwise it's nothing worse than getting halfway through your masking and realise you have to move your subject and then everything goes a little bit skewy. So please make sure you do this bit first because that's really important. And we need a tiny little bit of overhang here. So how about we use select subject again, um, again if you're not in the newer versions of Photoshop you can just manually grab your brush and begin to mask. So I might need to use that grid selection. What you can do at this stage is use the right click the grid selection when you're masking and that's going to make it all so much neater and faster. Just remembering to use the selections that are kind of there for you. If you can do that, it's honestly, it will make life super quickly when it comes to this edit. A little bit of shadow coming in. Okay, let's pop in image number five. I'm going to go even faster now. So image five, we're just going to drop in, not in the right place. So I'm just dragging up, right click, clipping mask, control or command T to resize that one in. I'm going to make sure that the, uh, the bottom line is as straight and even as we can get it. Again, I'm sorry, I'm sounding like a broken record, but it is so important to get that one there if you're going to want to do realistic masking. And just distorting in, probably the most um, part that requires the most concentration out of this is this, this bit here. Okay, and we're just going to add a little bit of masking. I'm going to control or command the grid selection, click on the number five mask. It's just going to make life easier for me when it comes to editing this one, masking it in. Or you can use select subjects. I'm trying to show you lots of different methods in Photoshop here. Um, because, you know, it really depends on what you're masking as to, you know, what, what kind of method you're going to use for that one. So I'm just masking in here. Theory could leave some of these original shadows um, because we've lined the box up really nicely. So you can also do that as well. If the colour's great, if it's a plain white box, um, use your own judgement there. As much of an original image as you can bring in 
um, you're always going to get that more realistic look if you can. Just doing that. A little bit of shading, a little bit of shadows. Play with the size of the shadows that you're creating um, to create that realistic look. Get rid of that one actually, it doesn't make sense there. And at any point you can click on the mask just to refine your selection um, if needed. And you can use the grid selection, just control or command, click the grid or the box selection just to help you when it comes to masking. Okay, and number six, coming in for number six, last one. Let's go, number six, drag and drop. And make sure it's above number six down here. If at any point you accidentally release a clipping mask, so number five, I put it in the wrong place, I was still there, you can just right click, create the clipping mask again. And I'm gonna do the same for number six. Let's just get her into position. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Just get her into that good position there. distorting those corners out and just to make sure everything is lined up perfectly with the genuine front face of the box and the fake grid that's come on over the top if you can do that much more realistic okay and done I'm going to use select subject for this one just to make an easy mask A little foot on this one don't we so, ah, what I'm gonna do oh, sorry, that's why I selected this what I'm gonna do for this one um, which you could do as well if you're doing these is I'm bringing it in but not the feet because we have a dress overhanging so I don't really want those feet overhanging in there so I'm gonna use the grid selection just as a guide I'm gonna grab a black brush and just going to just take away the feet because you know, it, for this particular shot it works, all depends on what you've got going on. If you've got this little dress, as long as you don't have very obvious knees coming up or anything like that, you can, you know, you can remove overhanging areas, you can warp, you can change, you can mask, you can do whatever you need. I recommend trying to shoot a really nice selection of images. You're better off almost having too many than not enough when it comes to this. So you've got plenty of choice when it comes to the editing. You can see there I actually just took those little feet away because for this image it works. It looks like her legs are crossed underneath. It's absolutely fine. So I'm just uh, going to paint on the shadow now. And there we go. I think we're done. And at this point you can change, you know, you can change the box colour. If you wanted to, I'm just using this. I just you literally just double click where it says change the grid color here. We could change it to pink. I mean that would look super cute, right? Do have a little zoom in, make sure if there's any shadows, any shading, anything else you do need to do um, before finishing. And you could choose the grid color to just choose an image, um, choose a color, sorry, from your image as well. Up here you have paint, shadows and highlights over the grid. You can drop this down, you have highlight grid paint and shadow grid paint. So if your light is um, you know, quite harsh, oops, I'm just going to take the flow down, we want this nice and smooth. So I'm on the highlight grid paint. You could be painting um, some highlights here. So I think the lights come from this direction, where would it be naturally hitting on your grid? And the same with the shadows. You know, where would the shadows be naturally hitting on your grid? Just bear in mind they will come over the top of your subject, so you can use the X um, to change to black, or you can click and you can take them off any areas you don't want. That's just a handy little extra to just paint a little bit of shading onto your grid. Shadow paint. Just notice there's a rogue bit there, I'm just going to take that off. And there we go, and then you can go ahead and save. It's a little bit of a long edit this one. 
but if you've lined up your um, your boxes really well if you crop them first and anything like that number them in um, and you get kind of a cool flow going on when you're masking you can create this super super cute shot so I hope you love using this um, please tag me in this over at LSPH I'd love to see what you're doing with this one if at any point you get frustrated just whoo, just breathe um, skip back undo hit the undo key if you need to and try again you will get there and you will be able to create this really really beautiful shot I absolutely love it we also have this one here you can see these images have been popped in this one here um, little girl had some transparency on the dress so let's see the original shot here you can see um, the original shot was overhanging so what I did in this one was I actually um, liquefied this a little bit so it's a bit larger so it adds up a little bit better because you can see we have that so you see here it's a bit a little bit of liquefaction but that was a more advanced edit if you've got any overhang with anything transparent try and either tuck it in or make sure it doesn't hit the bottom level and that's just going to make your editing a little more realistic this little face so you can see here you know we painted shadows we've painted everything in um we come down here using the exact same principle paint the shadow layer here anything like that that we've done we use the box selection the grid selection and all of the masking selections here. And the same principle goes for this. You've got the exact same layers in the nine, you've got the same layers in the portrait, exactly the same, it works in the same way. So I can't wait to see what you do with this, can't wait to see your little box creations. Um, these are so super cute, um, really, really amazing for your clients. Um, any point in the tutorial gets stuck please just rewind it pause for a minute hit the undo key it'll be fine I promise you I'm Lauren thanks for watching <laughs>